Hello, hello. I think it's like, I don't know what time it is. I wanna say like 6.30. We just came back from dinner with my dad and John. Trying to check out and see if my skin looks dewy. I put on this uh, Glow Drops Pearl in my lotion instead of doing like a bronzer and I can't tell. I only put it like right here and I put blush on top. Again, yesterday, if you saw my life, you know I don't know how to do makeup, so. <laughs> um, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. My dad is the person I asked for um, for help when I knew that I could not do this on my own. Get sober, that is. I was at a point, you guys, where Jeez, by the grace of God, you know how like some people just stop. You never want to just stop alcohol, cold turkey. It's more dangerous than some drugs. Um, and then like through detox, you can think that you're done detoxing, but like seizures and death can happen like three to seven days later. It's scary. But anyway, I remember being on, uh, I was on all sorts of prescriptions. One of them was Lamictal, which was a mood stabilizer because they thought I was bipolar, my psychiatrist, when really she'd just give me whatever, like I wanted the ADHD medicine, like everything. I think I was got prescribed a lithium at one point. Um, anyway, you drink on those kind of medications and duh, you're gonna have mood swings. But one of the, um, one of the warning labels, like a major warning label, was that if you drink alcohol on this prescription, you could have seizures. And that never stopped me. Like, you'd think I'd know that I was sick then, but it didn't. So anyway, I knew in that that weaning off wasn't something I could just do. I was already terrified of dying. I remember looking in the mirror. It was on the sidewall, actually, just like this. And for whatever reason, I could see my skin turning green. And I was like, oh my God, I need help. God, help me. And we were um, on the way to a, maybe the way back to a family reunion in Kansas City, Missouri. When I was like, dad, I think I want to, I need to stop drinking. I need help stopping drinking, but I'm not gonna do it during the family reunion. And oh my gosh, trying to find alcohol during the family reunion was absolutely miserable. But I somehow did, an alcoholic always does. Um, so yeah, I wasn't coming on here to talk about that. <laughs> I was coming on to say Happy Father's Day and yeah, my the importance I guess of that is to ask for help, you guys. You do not have to get sober alone. Um, and then John, my partner, we're together almost 10 years, he, is one of the first people, actually, I'd say first friend, that um, guy, whatever, when I went to rehab, I told no one. I told none of my friends. I literally didn't say goodbye to anyone. I just went and then I was that when I was there, I didn't, like I changed my Facebook name. Um, I was so embarrassed, I think. That and I just, alcoholism was so stigmatized and I was 27. So, I don't know. I don't know what my thoughts were. I just didn't want people to know. And I was also terrified that if I went back to hanging out with the same people, that all my work that I was doing in rehab would be for nothing. Although when I was in rehab, I'll tell you, I met this girl named Allie. She's dead now. Um, from overdose, but I met her and we were like, yeah, there's no way we're never not drinking again or using, we're just here to get our addiction under control. Like, I don't have a problem. So anyway, it's interesting in hindsight, seeing the people I reached out to and how involved in my life they are now. My dad is who helped me get into rehab. I went to Hazelden Betty Ford. It's a co-occurring program. So they were able to actually 
take me off all my meds for X amount of days and then figure out that I wasn't bipolar um, and that it was just all the mixture of the meds and the alcohol. And that was really helpful because if you can't get your mental health diagnosis correct, you're going to be treating yourself with drugs and alcohol. What do you call that? Self-medicating with those things because you cannot find answers, right? Um, so that was that's, being diagnosed bipolar is a huge misdiagnosis. And that's why I went to um, Hazelton Betty Ford School of Addiction Studies like two years later, when was it? No, I, I got sober 2013 and I graduated. I had to go back and get my undergrad and then I graduated. It took me three years to get my master's. And so that was 2019. So you guys do the math. Six years later, I went back and got it because I have this huge passion for misdiagnosis. I think that's where my passion for um, getting to root causes is too. Because I was prescribed so much stuff, so much stuff. And then coming out of rehab, I was prescribed a lot too, which they think they have the correct diagnosis is. Um, but still, being prescribed ADHD, depression, all that, and not getting to the root cause of things. I do get it. Medicine has a place because you can't just be thrown out into this crazy quick fix world. Um, expected to make, like, have a job. A lot of people have to get right back to work after um, rehab, if they're even fortunate enough to go to rehab at all. And in that, sometimes doing root causes is not, is not something that can be accomplished because you have to be able to function. You can't be like a walking dead depressive person or have your ADHD so out of control you can't hold a job, right? So that's where I think medicine is important. I think my biggest gripe with all the medication is that one, they don't tell you simultaneously, here's how you need to heal, like at root level while doing your meds. They just give it to you and say, okay, we're gonna do this and people just trust. And you know what? Because we're in that quick fix world, have you ever gone off a of med? It is hard. It, I mean, I tried to go off them for 18 years. One time I did it cold turkey when I got pregnant and I thought that that's how first trimester pregnancy was supposed to be. That's what I thought the brain zaps were, being pregnant. And I was like, oh my God, how do pregnant women do this? So anyway, um, <laughs> this isn't even what I was gonna come on and talk on. I was gonna come on and talk on about emotional hangovers. It's probably what I put the subject on. You guys are like, what WTF are you saying, Bethany? Um, I don't know if you guys recognize emotional hangovers when you have them. I went into this crazy thinking that I was above emotional hangovers. Kind of like, you know, I was above hangovers. And what I mean by emotional hangover, if you guys have never had one or never pinpoint what it is, is like after you've been hanging out with a lot of people, all week or it's out of your norm or even it's in your norm but you end up giving a lot of yourself you can feel super exhausted or for some reason today I was reaching for quick fixes in terms of food and caffeine more and more than I normally would because of my exhaustion given I did go to bed late but I got back from that leader retreat where I'm with a bunch of people I know and then a bunch of people I didn't know and I don't know if you guys are like this, but in my recovery, I still feel very awkward in front of people. I get in my head a lot. Um, and I'm like, can I say this? Can't I say this? How can I act? And then like, if I say something that I'm not sure is right or that I think is funny, I used to like ruminate in my head of oh god you're so stupid you shouldn't have said that or that wasn't even funny and that is really emotionally exhausting so um when I'm emotionally hungover I make sure to try and eat properly um whatever that looks like for you and I try to get sleep in and rest and just hang which if you're anything like me a little bit 
sometimes rest is equates to in our brain.